What's so special about Hero Bread's soft, fluffy, and delicious breads, buns, and tortillas? Hero Bread serves up 0 to 1 grams of net carbs, 5 to 11 grams of protein, and high fiber in every delicious serving. Made with natural ingredients, Hero Bread supports gut health, promotes weight management, and helps maintain blood sugar. Hero also drops other limited edition ultra low net carb goodies like rich flaky croissants and buttery brioche slider rolls. Head to hero.co to shop today. <laughs> Welcome back to the Pot It Together podcast. I'm Nicole, and I'm joined by my beautiful, lovely, wonderful co-hosts, Adam and Becky. Hello. Wow. Do you really feel that way about us after you just roasted us? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we had to make up for it. We knew it was coming it. because we heard, you guys know I love you, right? <laughs> yes. That is instantly <laughs> shiver down my spine what did we do wrong this time my mind instantly went to we've been replying to your texts like what? <laughs> we did the business hour like we i thought we were doing so good but apparently it was something else <laughs> <laughs> it's really not that big of a deal i was i was telling them there were some sounds in uh the last episode which now i'm noticing my volume is peaking quite a bit hmm so maybe hmm. it's good to test our mics every time <laughs> maybe it's good okay that's better okay wait before we get into it i was just looking at my penis cactus and oh. there's spikes at the base do you see the spikes like down here oh, but yeah. not on the sh- ah! Wait, oh. Oh, fuck, I didn't see that one. Yeah. I just stuck my finger. I saw it, it as you went in for it. I'm like, wait, what are you doing? Well, <laughs> not I didn't on see the it. shaft. <laughs> there is one on the shaft, I guess. Maybe, but look, it's a double peen. Maybe he's got yeah. ingrown hairs from uh, yeah. shaving mm. the shaft. Shave. <laughs> well, I'm scared. There's that explicit button <laughs> that we got to... Hey, welcome back. Welcome we actually just back. announced today on Instagram that season eight's back. Everybody was very concerned. Yeah. What's we up? We're not going to just drop off the face of the planet and no, not say. No, we would not. No. Um, what is, though, our topic for today before we get too far? Yeah. Uh, the topic <laughs> for today. Listen, we're a little rusty, okay? We, we took a five-month break, okay? We're a little rusty. Five but months? Was it that long? Or four months. I four months. Was, I apologize. I think it was three. It December. November, December, January, February. We, we we were in November. Okay. Okay. Mid-November. Right? <laughs> yeah. December, January, February. Three. Okay. Three and a half. Okay. So. <laughs> five <laughs> months. Almost half a year. <laughs> we're still a little rusty. Uh-huh. Our topic for today is each other convincing the others what genus they should love right that's yeah. not the topic yeah something along those lines you what? saw the title convincing you to like our favorite genus that's yeah. right wait who are we convincing are we convincing our audience or each other d all of the above mm. okay yeah. perfect um but yeah so let's do a little catch up little catchy catch we saw each other last week we spoke about this on patreon so if you're a patron thank you we love you you've probably heard this but i thought i thought we could talk a little bit more about our event because i feel like we didn't go into detail about the event and where we were at and all that so let's chat a little bit about that yeah so we held it at the west bottoms plant company in Mm -hmm. kansas city missouri which was a gorgeous shop i mean if you are in the kansas city area i would mm-hmm. say within like Go three there. hours it's worth it it is worth a yeah. visit mm-hmm. yeah. um they have a lot of plants but they also do a lot of have a lot of local artists and artists in general with their stuff there so like it's the best place to buy gifts for anybody really I mean, a truly. lot of novelty gifts, a lot of mm-hmm. funny gifts, vintage. Um, there was like a lot of vintage clothes. 
Yeah, I saw that. Just fun stuff. And then West Bottoms Planco, they have a candle company, correct? Yes. Yeah, and the candles are amazing. Yes, they are. Yeah, so f- so delicious. And then we also did some some crafts. They have an ADH DIY craft cafe, which is for one such a cute name for a craft bar. It and is. Like as I was looking around at everybody doing their crafts because we had quite a few people come to to visit us, but then there were also guests that had reserved spots there. And it was like moms and daughters friends couples it was so mm-hmm. cute and it's such a good idea for like a little date night yeah a hundred percent super fun i always see pottery studios do like a wheel throwing date night but mm. can you imagine i feel like that'd be so bad for my relationship because <laughs> wheel throwing is so hard i feel like i'd be like get your yeah. man hands out of there i want to do it like i think it would just <laughs> i think we would fight <laughs> yeah yeah well see i did that once when did you? I, with my ex and she was an art teacher and ceramicist so like she knew what oh. she was doing and the guy teaching the class also knew her either from like some professional way he completely ignored us the entire time <gasps> because he was like oh. oh well she knows what she's doing and she did know what she was doing but you know who didn't know that they were doing <laughs> me you you know who didn't get any help me i made you. like an ashtray and that's only because i don't i it was like well that's as far up as i could make it was an ashtray height yeah it was it was awful <laughs> i'm cute. intrigued i'm intrigued to take a class now that i think of it an ashtray would actually be really easy to make because you yeah. just pull up the sides slightly and then you can make little indents right for the yeah. little little c- cigarette uh well, we're not promoting smoking to say so. I, I would like to say though that <laughs> we were at the de la casa and mm-hmm. i got to physically hold in my hands a pot that becca created oh yeah and for her to talk in this podcast about how bad she was i'm like oh, fuck Mike. off this pot yeah. i would have never yeah. if you would have lined it up with all of these amazing purchased ceramicist pots i would never have been able to pick it out of the line as that's the one becca created no Hmm. genuinely genuinely yeah i was shocked so gross why do you have to be so good at things oh god (laughs) it was like the singular good thing i made and then she was like oh well i'll bring you my worst one and i looked at it i was like still looks great I wish that I made more things, but I was really, uh, well, I'm a perfectionist, so I wasn't really grinding out the pots, and I really should have, but I was just like, oh, it's not perfect, I need to redo it, and I wish I didn't do that, because I wasted, like, I didn't even use my whole clay thing, mm. like, it just got put back into the clay recycling, the recycles, I didn't use it. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> I'm going to look into a class in Chicago and see, there's got to be some. I want to oh, take a class. There is definitely some. A thousand yeah. percent. Oh, and you something. could do it with Mia. That would be cute. That would be. She would like that. I think. Yeah. Yeah. She would nice. like that. Um, I'm kind of bummed because after seeing everybody making candles at the craft cafe, I kind of wanted to do that, but then they had mentioned that you know they might not be cured in time. But that that is something I would like to do is pour a candle. I love that stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I guess we should really kind of talk about that real quick. But like basically the ADH DIY cafe, you can make reservations for Mm -hmm. tons of different options to think like you can build a terrarium, you can make macrame, you can do embroidery, you can make a candle, a stamp, Mm -hmm. a a weaving, like a wall weaving. Yeah. And they all have like tutorials and stuff. And so it's basically like that paint your own pottery, but like way better because there's so many different options to do. But the candle one in particular, they did say that they need a day to cure. Yeah. So like if you're just visiting Kansas City, I think it would be smart to make an early reservation. And then hopefully by the end of the day, you could pick it up and it'd be, you know, ready to travel. If not, Mm -hmm. they said they would ship it. But it was really cool to see that people like making candles and they smelled delicious. Yes. yes yeah the one that you brought out a couple candles adam and one of them the one that you gave me smells so good it's like planty but in like a like herbal i don't know it smells really good i'm yeah. excited mm-hmm. it's like a good summer candle it was yeah green tea something but 
the cafe busy the whole time. So really snag your reservations if you're going to be there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it was great that we all just got to hang out and kind of like make stuff while chatting. So it wasn't just Mm -hmm. like awkward standing and staring at each other. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. It was the it was the perfect location to do it at. Yeah, I think. Absolutely. And Tristan and Austin, um, the owners were so sweet, was like, anytime you want to come back, like if we're ever in Kansas City again, that'll be the spot for sure. But I really like I feel like I want to go back because I didn't get to thoroughly look at everything there. I didn't want to be rude and like walk away from our guests and like go shopping. (laughs) So like the last 10 minutes or so, I would just kind of like be lined and was like looking for a t-shirt, you know? Mm -hmm. But Which you got a really cute t-shirt. I did. I love it. And I can't remember the designer's name. Shoot. And you wore it the next day. I did. I was dedicated. Without washing. And I was like, who is she? Okay. So I thought of this. As I was putting it on and I was like, I wonder if they wash their clothes before wearing them like new clothes. I never do. No, I I don't now that I have my own rules. But when I was in under my mom's rules, it was a must. She was like, you are not putting that shirt on until I wash it. Okay. And I was like, but I want to wear it like now because I just bought it. (laughs) Yeah. If we go thrifting, we'll wash our clothes before we wear them. Yeah. But like. And when I think about that, I'm like, well, I guess that makes sense. But also people are touching the clothes <laughs> on the rack too, like at at regular stores. So yeah. it might be a I good mean, idea, but the reason I don't is because what if I want to return it? You can't you definitely can't return it after you wash it. That's true. I'm not That's a true. big proponent for returning things. I always forget or just like feel bad so I don't. Mm-hmm. But like uh, you really can't return it if you wash it. But That's if you true. keep the tags and you just wear it. But if it has, if it smells like clothing dye, then I wash it. Or, you know, when they smell like, they just have a certain smell sometimes. Yeah. Like they just came out of the package. Yeah. But, you okay, clothes from like, for example, Altered State, where you got your sweater, Adam, uh, it probably smelled like perfume. They probably smelled amazing. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, you'll never have to wash that thing. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Oh, I love Which that sweater so, so much. It's such a cute <laughs> sweater. I love it. Oh, yeah. Um yeah. altered state. Wow. I did not put that together though about the whole like alter thing. Yeah. I know. There's like a whole section in there that's like Bibles and stuff yeah. like that. I don't know if it was in that specific store, but I've been to other locations where they have like a whole section like if he'll take you to it, he'll get you through it. Like that kind <laughs> yeah. of stuff. Yeah, that kind of merch. Okay. Live, laugh, love. Yeah. Me and Mia go there often because it's just such a cute store. And she's looked for um, like winter formal and homecoming dresses there before. But every time we walk into one, they're usually playing Christian music, you mm-hmm. know, and everybody. And it's just very. Spirit, lead me where my dress is in your heart. <laughs> there you go that's the one um and when we were in altered state in columbia adam was like oh altered because it's alter apostrophe d yeah state and that's the first time i've ever noticed that mm. i was like why is it spelled that way connecting Duh. Duh. the altar Duh. Yeah. yeah okay but not like <laughs> That song, Oceans, that you just sang. Triggered? Not that we like (laughs) listen to uh, worship music now, but the Spanish version of that song is very beautiful. Is it? If you ever feel inclined. Yeah, it's really, really, really beautiful in Spanish. Uh, I dated a a Spanish-speaking individual, so that's why I know. It's really beautiful. But Christian music is beautiful, though. Not to, you know, get into that. It is really it is like I can I can get down with some Lauren Daigle. Okay. Oh, she's great. She's awesome. Yes. It's uh, did you guys see or have you ever seen this like joke online where it's like, oh, I thought that I was like having all these experiences with God, but then I just realized I like live music. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. You go to a mega church and they have this whole production and you're like I'm actually just going to a concert, and that's why I feel this way. 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty yeah. crazy cool, cool, cool. to realize. <laughs> that's how they, that's how yeah. they reel you in. Yeah, not to dog on other people's spiritual experiences, but like for me, that's what it was. I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah. I know. So we were so we were sitting at uh at our event, and Olivia was sitting next to me, and I would just ha- you know, making small chat, and she was I was basically said something about she said something about church, and I was like, oh, do like do you still belong to a church? Like, are you still going? She's like, yeah, I do, and I was like. I'm so sorry for everything I've ever said. Because <laughs> she's so sweet and kind. She's and so she, sweet. I, she was not offended by anything. But I was just like, I don't think about, because I'm just talking to my two best friends. Like, I don't think about the yeah. fact that other people are listening to this and that I've been like, oh, <laughs> fuck, fuck church. Let me, yeah. <laughs> Trauma dump. Oh, gosh. Hey, everybody's had, everybody's had their experiences, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but no, Olivia was so sweet. Everybody was sweet. Everybody that came out, we had a few people drive pretty far, which, you know, imposter syndrome really takes full effect when that happens. And it's like, yeah, for us, for us. Yeah, totally. There was three yeah. people that drove like more than five hours. Like, yeah. Bless people you from all. Yeah. Wisconsin, Oklahoma. I mean, it's just, yeah, it's a huge honor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was fun. And we can't, we can't wait to do it again. And there might or might not be something in the works already. Yay. Maybe. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, but like now that you guys are- One ho- of us hasn't confirmed that yet. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I am still like in my shutdown after vacation. Like yeah. I, my bags- are still unpacked. Are still packed. Okay. You mean packed? Packed. Yeah. They're still packed. Yeah. Okay. I took my necessities out of them, like the mm-hmm. teeth and the skincare, but that's it. Yeah. Not done mm-hmm. anything else. I've ignored it. And I have to keep it closed because I'm afraid that Mai Tai is going to go pee on it because he is sniffing things like crazy because of Cooper and Leo. Like he is all up oh, in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> my dogs just... were p- My dogs were pissed. Yeah. They're like, who is, who, who is he? <laughs> <laughs> we all have well you also have jazzy but we all have male dogs yeah, yeah. true so, this this is maybe slightly sexist towards female dogs but i just have never really vibed with female dogs i don't know what that says about me i'm not a pick me in any way but that i'm like why do i feel that way about female dogs are they do you notice a difference between jazzy and prime's demeanor like just based on gender or sex oh, or whatever yeah Oh, yeah. And I feel like a female dog and a male dog get along better genuinely yeah. than like two dogs of the same sex because I feel like there's more competition and I, yeah. dominance with the same sex dog. But mm-hmm. Jazzy's, I feel like Jazzy's a little bit more loyal than Prime, really? to be honest. Yeah, I mean, Prime would tear someone the fuck up if they came in that in the house and tried to do anything to us. Jazzy would probably lick them to death. Prime would probably run away. Jazzy would stay by us. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. They, I don't know, but I do <laughs> notice a difference. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I just when not. <laughs> this is such a blanket statement, but like, is it a red flag when a guy has a female dog? Maybe. Oh. I don't think so. Why is it a red, why is it a red flag? Egg. I don't know why. It's not. I don't really? know. Oh my gosh, we're gonna <laughs> we gotta put on that TikTok where they like scroll over to the ick <laughs> note and scroll <laughs> down to like f- cannot own a female dog. <laughs> yeah. No, I think I I grew up with mostly male dogs though, and we had one female dog who was like obsessed with my dad and like no one else, and I was like, what the oh. hell. Oh, so mm. there's some generational trauma there. Yeah. I'm jaded. Yeah. But I don't know. I feel like in all aspects, I'd prefer to be with women except maybe dogs. I don't know. I don't know. Mm. Okay. I need to okay. get over that. My next dog will be a girl. I'll I'll take care of that. I'll put that on myself to fix that and get another dog. Well, okay. you did birth a girl. You did. I did. And it's the best. Okay. So <laughs> there we go. So I'm oh, not a pick me. <laughs> you're wearing your sweater from Elizabeth. I, I just am. noticed. Is it Isn't cozy it so AF? Because it looks so cozy. It's so cozy. I love it so much. It it just fits perfect. It's so comfortable and and yeah. tis the season. It's it's back to winter. We recorded last night a Patreon episode and it was quite literally hot 
yeah. outside mm-hmm. in the Midwest, like Arizona hot. And woke up this morning and it was 24 degrees. Yeah. So we're back. Back in the tundra. And you had a tornado. Tornado. There was a tornado last night. So the tornado did not land in Palatine. It it touched ground in the town over from us, Barrington. But it went past us. So mm-hmm. like they were showing the wind speeds and Palatine was like number one. I think we had like 84 mile per hour winds. Thanks. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, which I'm shocked we didn't have more damage. I'm not complaining, but I'm shocked that we didn't have more trees down. Like I took Mia to school this morning and there wasn't a lot of damage. So I was kind of shocked by that because mm. that's some high wind speeds, you know? Yeah. It's really high. Yeah. Wow. But we made it out and now it's back to winter. So no, yeah. the sweater's appropriate. It is. It was chilly this morning chilly in my house daniel said do you want to start a fire i'm like what Ooh. for the singular day it's gonna be cold i don't think it's yeah. worth it i don't i just you're like it's it's the end of winter <laughs> yeah but you know what like i am so shocked because usually we're still using the fire uh, we usually stop in march but we stopped mm-hmm. in january a whole month early yeah like i yeah. mean i feel like there were a couple times that we could have used a fire <laughs> Okay, you guys were cold at my house and you didn't say anything. I was I was looking for a blanket because I'd be fine with just a blanket. But then the only one was your like heated blanket. I think it had a, like a cord oh, and I didn't want to grab it. And it I was smells like, like dog. Oh, does it? Oh. Well, Adam. Okay. In I my wasn't defense, that cold. It was not. It was not uncomfortable cold. I, I if, if I was uncomfortable, I would have said something. Yeah, well, and I'm always cold, and I always I liked. I mean, I'm always hot, so I love to be cold. So I appreciated the temperature in your home. Yeah, I definitely, in hindsight, should have had more blankies out. I don't know where all of ours are. I feel like they all needed to be washed because my kid was sick and throwing up on everything. Maybe that's why they went out. <laughs> yeah. Normally, yeah. I have blankets out. I don't know. I appreciate that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do you want to use the pukey blankie? But every time I touch a blanket, I just hear. Now we fold the blankets so we feel better about <laughs> ourselves, which is what Nicole was, which is what Cole, Cole, like literally at the Airbnb looked me in the face and go, now we fold our blankets. And I was like, okay, mom. Oh, <laughs> there were throw blankets on the couch and you can't go to bed with the couch in a dis- in disarray. I do every single day. Yeah, same. And I am oh, my fine. couch is are you still s- it's looking are bad. Are you sleeping on the couch? No. No. Oh. Well, <laughs> I'm shocked that you're not folding your blankets at home after we had this discussion five nights in a row. I'm shocked, but I digress. <laughs> wow. All right, should we get should we get into our topic? <laughs> uh, that, <laughs> On that note, <laughs> this this episode's kind of awkward. <laughs> I'm feeling awkward. Go. Um, well, yeah, let's get into the topic. Mod Ventures believes that tax savings begin with clean accounting. According to a 2021 study, 77% of small business owners admitted that handling income taxes was very or moderately burdensome. We know as business owners ourselves that this whole tax stuff is not easy and is usually better when left to the professionals. Mod Ventures makes taxes and accounting less stressful, more manageable, and actually saves you money. So if you're tired of being behind in your accounting, losing opportunities to save money, and wasting your own time doing all of your own books, Schedule a free consultation with Mod Ventures through the link in our bio. Picture this. You're not just fixing cars. You're living your passion every day. At Cox, you'll work on a diverse range of automobiles. Surrounded by a team of friendly, like-minded individuals, you'll enjoy great pay and benefits. Ready to make this a reality? At Cox, we're recruiting auto and diesel techs to join our Mannheim and Fleet Services teams. Learn, grow, and fine-tune your career as a technician at Cox. Find out more at cox.career slash autotech. Hey, so who wants to start? Should we just bounce off? Well, like, go back and forth? Not back and forth. I think we all need to plead our case. Yeah, we. I okay. think we all need to plead our case. There needs to be some sort of rebuttal because we have to play devil's advocate. 
even though I, okay. I hate when people play devil's advocate, we got to do it right now Yeah. to like bring up the cons and then somebody and then whoever is defending the case can be like, well, here's my response to that. And then that'll be it. How, what do we think I of wasn't, that? Okay. Well, I, mean, I mean, I think that's great. I wasn't ready for court, but I'm, <laughs> we're, we'll do it. <laughs> okay. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared. I'm scared. <laughs> Okay. Oh, should we start? Go first? I'll go first if you guys like want. Adam should go first. Okay. Okay. Adam's got. Adam's gonna tell us what genus should we love. Okay. I knew she was muting so she could eat. I knew it. <laughs> she's like, Listen, Adam can go first, and she grips out. her microphone with both hands, and I know she's pressing the mute mute button, and then all of a sudden, Nature Valley just creeps in. <laughs> When is Nature Valley going to sponsor me? I eat like six of these a day. They're so Just good. It's like I only eat like probably two anyway. <laughs> okay. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury. <laughs> Today. <laughs> Just kidding. So it's no, it's no secret that my favorite genus is Hoya. Like mm-hmm. absolutely no secret whatsoever. And I think that they should be everybody's favorite plant. Why? And there's, Why is that? there's still a lot of Hoya haters out in the world. Okay. For one, what is one of the most, to you guys, and I'm asking you this question, what is one of the most fulfilling things that your plant can do mm. for you? I know where you're going with this. I know where you're going with this. Put out grow new leaves. Okay. Yeah. That, so and you guys both say grow. Yes. Okay. I know what you think you wanted us to say. And but it doesn't you didn't apply. Say it. That's why you didn't say it. Because it doesn't apply it. to most house plants. That's why I didn't say it. Right. Well, flower. But it applies okay. to Hoya. Out of mm, all of okay. the house plants, Hoya have the best flower, I would think, right? Can you think yeah. of another uh, house yeah. plant that has the best flower? Anthurium, I'm mm. not a big fan. No. Begonias have a cool flower. They do. Okay. But it's yeah. not the same as Hoya. Hoya is definitely much more impactful. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So, strike that from the record, Judge. Thank you. Um, grow. <laughs> What's my other point <laughs> here? So, Becca, we okay. helped you with your plant chores while we were there because mm-hmm. we finally had the opportunity to help. Out of all mm-hmm. of the plants that you had, what was the one genus that didn't get tossed out? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. We- <laughs> Okay, I see the point you're making, but you're incorrect because we did throw out one. We um, did throw out one. Okay, one was. We did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> one was like shriveled. It looked like hay. <laughs> okay, Hoya. Okay. Hoya fared very well. They they looked yes. good still. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's basically my main argument. I feel like Hoya really do stand up to some shit. They stand up to my depression. They stand up to my apathy. And they just sit there, hang out until I'm ready. And I did find out that through my research and stuff for Let's Talk Hoya, that Hoya have these different photosynthesis uh, methods. And they can slip into this thing called cam idling, which basically just shuts down the whole plant when they're in a period of like drought and just harsh times so basically just the plant just completely shuts down i don't want to say mm-hmm. dormant but it's like it's called cam idling and it will not start photosynthesizing again and doing the whole exchange of carbon until it like receives w- water or is rehydrated so like mm-hmm. i had a cutting of a finlaysonii for like mm-hmm. th- three months and i never did anything with it it was just sitting on my shelf not in anything it was just a, i cut it and just laid it down really that thing, as soon as I put it in some soil and gave it some water, perked right back up and started growing. Mm. Wow. Three months. Yeah. And the leaves were like flimsy. It was like a piece of paper. So, wow. So what's the difference with that and what my princess was doing? The princess. Maybe we should have tried, but I don't think we even attempted. Well, I, I don't feel know like... if it was coming back, though. I really don't. I feel like once you get to the point of dry rot... um, it's kind of hard to bring it back. And I think that that's what it was, probably dry rot. I but think like that, he said, he just took a cutting. Yeah. Di- didn't have any roots. I think the big difference is the stem because the stem on your princess was wrinkly, mm-hmm. which to me was like, oh, no, that's not coming back. Because mm-hmm. once the stem has started to die back. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're not going to think about princess. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I'll send you a cutting. <laughs> but mine has mine has flat mite, so maybe I won't. <laughs> Keep it. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it. I think that Hoya have beautiful foliage. I think that they have beautiful flowers, and they really can go longer periods than most plants can without being cared for and still, you know, alive and happy. So that is basically my main argument for Hoya. A secondary argument, not specifically for the genus Hoya, but they do visually tell you when they want water. Like it's a very easy to know when a Hoya needs to be watered. And mm-hmm. I I love the simplicity of that, of a plant that kind of can show you its needs and communicate that. Yeah. Any arguments? No, but I feel like I need to help you with one. Can I add to your argument? Am I allowed to do that? Yeah, you can. <laughs> okay. Because um, it's not a competition, is it? No. Well, okay. Um, okay. Be- I was hoping like- for a competition. <laughs> 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 I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, Hoya also do well in multiple mediums. Like you could, you could grow them in soil. You could grow them in pond. You could grow them in leka. You can't really do that with a lot of plants. You can, but it's not ideal for some. Yeah, they. If you're doing stuff like passive hydro, Hoya don't need huge pot size. That's another thing. They do not need huge pot sizes. Like, I think the biggest, my biggest Hoya is in like a five inch pot. And that's Mm -hmm. the biggest it's ever going to be. I'm never going to up pot it into a different one. The root system isn't like, like Aeroids in Leka, Aeroids in Pawn. It goes insane. Syngonium, Mm -hmm. within a couple weeks, you're going to be like, oh, there's roots coming out of everywhere. You don't get that with Hoya. So that is, that is a good thing to mention. They do, they do, they're very versatile. Yes. Mm. Okay. Good argument. That was good. Mm-hmm. Downside, flat mites. I was going to say, mm. that is the thing that I was going to bring up because it's one of those pests. It's like you don't know you have it until you like have a microscope or you're just like looking at the symptoms. Yeah. It, it, well, you know, chlamydia mites. We've yeah. had this chat many <laughs> times. Yes. But not on main. Well, I, well, we have, but I wanted to say on main, Becca's Hoya have zero mites. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she cured them Zero. at some point or they just never No, you had to have cured them because I know that the things I gave you had mites on them because mine did after I gave them to you. Yeah, I had them for sure at some point. And hey, the spray down with Captain Jack's might have been the thing to, it to cure it. But as we were looking through my collection, we were like, I personally was like, OK, well, this one probably has it because it's not growing. OK, well, yeah. it didn't have it. So it's just me. But. It's just hard to know. Like, I was certain that they had it, and then they didn't. It's I, like I just... do think at some point they did. So I truly think that maybe you did find a easier cure for it. Yeah. With the yeah. Captain Jacks, because your Dakie did have the growth pattern of what would signal as mites. It was like a stacked mm-hmm. ab- aborted growth points, and then now it had the leaf at the top of it. So I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah. Something anyway, fishy was going on. Good news But that's there. a huge yeah. con, because... Probably everybody has them and doesn't know. Yeah. yeah. Do we think that more plants have flat mites or do we think that flat mite just really love the woody stems? I'm, I'm Hoya. I, do, I, I have seen them on all kinds of plants, but I don't know oh, okay. if they would be on those plants if the Hoya weren't in that collection. I mean, I don't think that they're specific to Hoya, but mm-hmm. that's where we, we started to find them. I haven't taken my microscope that is a big to my con. cactus color. Yeah, it's a big con. I haven't taken my microscope to my cactus and like succulent collection. And I'm just wondering if, you know, they're there. Mm. It's a possibility. I know that they've been on orchids before. Like it's a, I don't know if it's just like epiphytes they stick to. I know orchids, Hoya. Yeah, they mm-hmm. can be on any plant, but. Okay. Here's a fun fact about Hoya. And maybe you can confirm or deny I'm pretty sure that Hoya are related to, what's that plant that butterflies like for monarchs? Milkweed. It's gone. Milkweed. Yeah. Milkweed mm. flowers. We we have a native milkweed here that grows, and the flower looks exactly like a Hoya flower, and then I started looking into it, and I find out they're related. Yeah. Oh. They do look very similar, because I, I was actually trying to look up milkweed pollination to help me figure out how to pollinate my Hoya. Mm. Oh. But- haven't really tried. 
could you capture like okay maybe this sounds a bit out, out of pocket here could you put hoyas that are blooming like ready to be fertilized or whatever it is in a bin and get some moths and put the moths in there oh shit and probably like force it to happen like through that is that probably. has anyone ever done that i what mean experience experiment maybe people have done it i don't know i mean lots of people have their hoyas start getting pollinated outside you know it would be a fun experiment to try, though. I don't know where I would find a moth. The only thing that makes me nervous about that is that I've known friends that had a moth get into their house, and like the moth l- literally ate almost whole Plants. Hoya leaves. Yeah. Holy shit. Well, then you wouldn't be able to do that. So I guess if you have a bigger Hoya that you, you can lose a few leaves, that's fine. Mm. They eat? I guess moths like eat clothes. That's like a funny thought. Maybe if you provide them with food aside from the Hoya or you raise them in captivity so the other moths can't tell it to eat the leaf. <laughs> raise it from a bit. Ba- raise okay, it from a Here's what babe. you got to do. You got to get some cocoons. You got to treat them like your own babies. All right. You feed them and they never have to know that in the wild. <laughs> <laughs> They'll never know. Works for dogs. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Some sure. people have pet tigers. You can tame a moth. <laughs> you can tame a moth. You can you can tame a moth. <laughs> oh god. Uh, that is a really funny thought. We in elementary school, we raised mandukas, which is the um the it's the same caterpillar, the hornworm caterpillar, the big green ones on your tomato plants. Mm-hmm. We raised them and they turn into moths. Mm. wow look at that that okay side note caterpillars do freak me out because they basically (laughs) boil down to like a what's called a primordial ooze and then rebuild themselves into a butterfly inside of that cocoon yeah but it's like does the ooze retain memories and that kind of stuff that's what scientists are trying to figure out but it's just like a weird (gasps) process like because they wrap themselves in their cocoon and then like goo and then butterfly Thank you. Anyway, so who wants to start convincing next? Who's next up? Well, do we think that Adam did a good job? No, I don't. I think so. (laughs) I really don't. I'm regretting it. Here's me trying to make it a competition. No, you did great. That was really good. That was a good argument for Hoya. It makes me want to love Hoya more. But as you guys saw in my collection, they just don't really grow. So I think I just I need to administer more water and maybe then I will see better results. But like at this point, I like them, but I'm not obsessed because it's just yeah. not the same results I get with other plants. I think, though, to, your your pot sizes are too big. And I didn't want to be like, oh, you need to do this, this and this, because I don't want you to like be in chores. The ones on the shelf are fine. But like the ones you had hanging up on the wall, the pot sizes were too big for okay. basically all of them. Not your obavada. That's a huge plant. But like the other ones, I feel like they just need to be this size pot. Like the Uh ones that were in like a five or six inch, I think they were too big for the size of that Hoya. Really? Mm -hmm. We should do a plant chores video together, Adam, where you just tell me what to do. I I just need to be told what to do because I don't know. (laughs) Clearly what I'm doing is not working, you know, like, yeah, no, I'm open to suggestions all around. Yeah. Hoya. I think that you would really love your Hoya more if, yeah, you downsize some of your pots but also f- just fertilize and wipe off your leaves. Like cleaning off your leaves, mm. it's very on brand, will <laughs> help your leaves grow. Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're, right. you're right. But I'm excited to just see what happens in the next couple months for that specific Hoya shelf. And I think that's what we need to, we need to like keep in our brains to have updates on because I really do mm-hmm. think that that is going to start bu- popping off here soon. Yeah, I hope so. But uh, but also, like, you do have some beautiful Hoya. Mm-hmm. So I don't want percent. you to, like, yeah. make our audience think that your Hoya all look like shit, because they don't. No, you're I, compacta swoon. Yeah. Yeah, so it's really pretty. Yeah. yeah. It's just they've looked like that for four years. There's been no yeah, change. Okay. And they I've had them, most of them, for a very long time. And they should be, like, quadruple, if not it's 10 times the size you know what i mean so i'm just like yeah. what the fuck is happening yeah. like i, I feel- think we all look at adam's collection 
and we get a little down on ourselves. We compare. <laughs> we compare. I think you're, yeah. I need to get you a different piece of um, the fishtail Hoya. Why am I drawing a blank? Polyamara. Because <laughs> I don't know if I like the clone that you have. It's weird, huh? It is. It grows weird. So I think I want to get you. That's what I got to put in a list for a Becca box. Because I want you to. Because I have um, mm. an outer variegated one now, a uh, broget, which is like a silvery splashed one. Mm-hmm. We'll just get you all the polyneuras. Um, okay. I love a silver okay. splash moment. Oh, yes. Mm. I love it. I don't have any Hoya that have silver splash. Your eyes just Ooh, got really? huge. Think that about it. Sad. I, have, yeah. I don't have any. I would, that's what I was. I was like looking in my head. You don't. Yeah. Mm. You need some silver splash. We do. I do. Okay. Nicole, do you want to convince? Sure. Okay. My genus that I'm going to convince you guys all to love and get is cacti, mm. of course, because, listen, some would argue that cacti only grow well in drier climates and like the desert. And yes, while they do, that's true. But I've had cactus for quite a long time. My collection has downsized greatly just because of life. But at one point I had like over 50 cactus in Chicago without grow lights. Okay. On my teak bench. I looked back at those photos not that long ago and I was like, oh, I kind of missed that thing. It broke. I need to get another one. But they were just in front of a window, south facing, and once I gave them grow lights, they did much better. But I kept them alive for like two years, and they grew every summer, and they're just I don't, they're just beautiful to have. They're beautiful to have. Rewarding, okay? Here's my argument with the reward that you get with a cactus. Or I guess you could throw euphorbia in this category too, because there are slow growers, but when they do grow, that sense of fulfillment you get is just, oh, it's its wonderful. And let's talk a little bit about blooms, okay? Because you mentioned the blooms. Cactus have some beautiful blooms. Sometimes the blooms are bigger than the actual plant. I think we've all had cactus bloom before. Mm-hmm. What's the, what's the one plant that you have in your backyard, Adam, that we repotted with tiny hands? Or blindfolded? The stack of dicks? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. That's, oh, that's that is the, common, that is that's the, the official name. name. The mm-hmm. mammalaria. The but when that one blooms, it does look like a girl from Coachella asking for Coke. Because mm-hmm. it's a crown. It makes a little crown. It's a little flower crown. That's like, right. Got some Coke? Uh- <laughs> some Coke? A girl asking for Coke. Uh, um, okay. So, and cactus... It's it's very easy to like you you kind of save money with having a cacti collection because you don't have to repot them as frequently. Mm-hmm. Um, you can use stones in your soil, so you're not using a ton of soil. You know, add additives in there, and they don't require watering as much. So if you have a really busy life and you travel a lot, cactus is, it's a great option. But what do you. they require the most of? sun light so you do have to have a special setup you do have to have a special setup okay but i did say that i had my cactus in a window for two whole years if you're not looking for them to to grow quickly they'll do just fine in a window and arguably i want to say any window because i had them throughout my my house before but yes, once I gave them grow lights, it was like, okay, some of these don't even fit on my shelf anymore. They did really well. I also had them on heat mats, which is another expense. So possibly another con. Mm. Um, and they just, they were much happier on heat mat, grow mats, um, heat mats. With do light. you notice your flowers? I wanted to ask you about the cactus flowers. Do they only open at night for you? Because some of my outside mm-hmm. flowers are only at night. They only open at night, which really? is a bummer. Yeah, like the spiralis, the big flower mm. that comes off of that only happens at night. Yeah. Um, and my apuntia, my, it's like the purple one, Rosita, uh, bright yellow flowers, but they only fully open at night. In the daytime, wow. they kind of close up. I didn't know that. I mean, I do have a couple that only open at certain times but one of one of mine it's i think it's a mammalaria 
It opens during the day. Mm. I wonder if the night blooming thing has something to do with moths as well. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, wait. No, Maybe. I think that they're pollinated by bats. A lot of cactus are. A lot Cacti. of like saguaros are, yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Oh, I think I knew that. I think I knew that. But that's that's a cool thing mm-hmm. to think that little bats are on my cacti outside. It's so cute. Now, <laughs> um, tactile wise, do you love caressing your cactus, well, Nicole? Listen, no, <laughs> that would probably be a con unless you're a freak <laughs> and you like things like that. I, I put together a reel from our trip, and it, in one of the sections, it's just Adam caressing this rat tail cactus and saying, it's so soft, and you could see him, like, say it, mouth out the words, and I'm just like, no, it's absolutely not <laughs> soft. There's little <laughs> daggers down there. I don't, I, don't, I don't need to caress my cactus. Mm. Looking at them gives me, gives me enough joy. Yeah. But if you're that kind of person, they are, free. They are beautiful. They are. They are. Okay. Okay. Do you, you don't bring them outside in the summer anymore, do you? I did last summer, but I'm debating on not doing it this summer. It's just a lot. It's a lot of work to bring them outside. They do love it outside though. So like, am I a bad plant parent if I don't? Probably. No, no, I wouldn't say so. I feel like it's less work to put them outside because then they get watered when it rains and I don't have to worry Mm. about it at all. Yeah, you're right. True. But I also don't have like a grow light set up indoors for them. So I would feel guilty having them inside. Mm. See, I would still water my cactus outside because they're all in terracotta pots for the most part. And it's really windy here. So they dry out pretty quickly. So mm-hmm. even on days that it doesn't rain, I would find myself watering them like every other day, which sounds yeah. like a lot, but they're not in a ground landscape. So they need more water in my opinion um yeah. but i'm watering the garden and like the the f- the florals we have outside anyway so it's not like it's an extra step mm-hmm. i'm doing it already yeah but it's bringing them from downstairs upstairs and outside and then like that's it's always fun bringing them outside in the in the spring it's always fun setting it up but bringing them in in the fall it's I just feel like it's like the worst part of collecting house plants for me mm. because I don't know. I just freak out about bringing in bugs and having to repot because they outgrew the pots and like it's, it's a lot, but they do love it out there. They yeah. Really do. Also Hoya and cactus, if they're dying, they take a long time to fully die so like if you're just that's true wanting some greenery it'll stick around for a while yeah looking fine for a while you know a con though with some cacti though is that once they once you get like nicole you're supposed to be convincing us now supposed to be telling us cons i know okay never mind (laughs) no i'm not gonna say it once they get like root rot or a dry rot they do tend to shrivel up pretty quickly. And then you're like, what the fuck happened? Yeah. Like if you, if you overwater or underwater, if you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, they will be like, and just fall over. And that's always, that's always fun. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I, I love them so much. And pretty much every time I go to a plant shop, I really try to get a new one which I have been doing lately and I didn't do in Kansas city and I'm kind of bummed that I didn't, but I didn't see anything that jumped out at me that I was like, I need to have that. So what do you guys think? Good argument. Good argument. Okay. I love them. I think they're great. I've got a big collection. Mm -hmm. You do. You have a beautiful collection. Your white ghost euphorbia. She's jelly. She is a Mine has been doing great as of late, which I'm excited about too mm, but yeah becca's is a gorge she's mm-hmm. a tall girl she's mm-hmm. five foot five same height yeah. as me wow yeah okay my plant genus that i want to convince you guys to want or love is i'm gonna go with anthurium because it's my favorite <laughs> <laughs> i knew you'd say that okay adam needs his soundboard sounds <laughs> <laughs> it is arguably one of the hardest genuses 
but in my opinion, that makes it worth it. That makes it so gratifying. And there are ways to grow them that makes it feel almost effortless, just like it's any other plant in your collection. So, for example, I have my plant cabinet, which a majority of my anthurium are in, and I water it like once a week-ish, which is pretty much how often plants need to be watered anyway. And Mm -hmm. if in that environment where it is more humid, they can go a little bit longer without water. Like I, I could push it to like 10 days or more. Because it's not a dry environment. So they're not Mm going to immediately be pulling moisture from their leaves. They're going to sort of pull from the air a little bit more. That's just something that I've noticed. I'm not an expert. I mean, I will say that your cabinet was gorgeous. Like there was was not one dead leaf in that cabinet. And Mm -hmm. I'm assuming you gave them the same care as your plant room, right? That's correct. (laughs) So it it had been like okay. three weeks since I watered yeah. them. Yeah, and yeah. they looked great. Truly, yeah, they did. Yeah, they looked pretty yeah. good. Well, when I watered them today, they did look a little worse for wear. Like they definitely looked better a couple months ago, but it's fine. Like mm-hmm. things happened, yeah. but it yeah, it, they're just really really rewarding. <coughs> and when they put out a new leaf, it starts off really small. And like a really mm-hmm. fun color, like either like a really deep burgundy or like a really beautiful copper color. And then it just gets bigger and bigger, which is so cool that it like it's just expanding from nothing, basically. Like it's just really interesting to watch. Um, that's mm-hmm. a huge reason why I love them. Like a new leaf is so exciting and they they are pretty fast growers. Uh, in my collection, they're probably the plants that put out the most frequent growth. Uh, which does mean they're sort of heavier feeders, so you do need to keep up with year-round fertilizing, which for some could be a con because it's one's extra step. But especially if they're living in a closed environment like that, they're not going to go into dormancy because it's warm and wet in there. Mm -hmm. Um, Another pro, which I find to be a huge pro that I'm sort of slowly diving into, is you can actually cross-pollinate them and or not even cross-pollinate, but just you can pollinate them and create seeds and then grow plants, which I think is just one of the coolest things in the world. It's like propagating on on drugs. <laughs> that on is coke. cool, though. That yeah. is cool. It's so cool. And, like, you can make, you can make your own DIY crosses. And I'm sure a lot of crosses that we would make at home have already been made and discovered, so it wouldn't be necessarily brand new. But it's cool that like you made your own. It's like the ultimate DIY. Mm-hmm. And it's just so fun. And I have like four or five little baby plants that I'm growing right now out of yeah. all the seeds that I got. And Nicole has a few too. Yes. I should have took that one was, when I was there. Yeah, you should yeah. have. Because then we all would have one. Mm-hmm. Well, if I can get them to get to a bigger stage, I'll send you one because mine are the same size as yours. Yeah, they're, they're kind of not just, getting any bigger. They're kind of just stagnant now. I need to like figure out what to do at this point. Yeah, maybe fertilize. I don't know because I've just been giving it water. Yeah, I put some fertilizer in that little bin, but maybe it, maybe it's time for some soil heavily amended. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't put it in Dela tanks yet, but anyway, mm-hmm. yeah, I think they're really great, and I think once you find a routine that works for them they're very easy to take care of actually and they're also pretty pest resistant they did get thrips when i got thrips but generally i haven't had any other i haven't never had a pest on them besides the thrips thing and i think that thrips are like a whole other beast so yeah yeah my the i think the con is that you will have to kind of amend the area that they're in and not everybody wants to do that so it could be a bit more of a startup cost um, mm-hmm. or they'll just need a lot more attention from you as far as watering goes if you're not going to put them in a closed environment but yeah 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 that's I, that's my argument I do think that Ethereum do well in a closed environment with humidity like you said like it's it's more of a control thing it's mimicking more of where they grow naturally mm-hmm. um and I can't remember which Anthurium I had. Was it the Vitichii? Am I saying that right? The Vitichii. Mm-hmm. Vitichii. I always say that wrong. The king. Uh, the king. Oh, and I, had, I think I had a queen too. Mm-hmm. 
but they dried up. Yeah, I just could not keep them watered enough or like happy enough with humidity. So Mm -hmm. I think that that's like the key is humidity. And yeah. There was yeah. a moment, well, our last trip, like a year ago, we got a bunch of anthurium from Equihenida. Mm-hmm. And I had those for the longest time, not in any special thing. I put them in pond, yada, yada, yada. Uh, they died because of my own neglect, but they did, they were able to take some abuse. Like those things got so floppy and I watered them and I was, I looked at the roots and I was like, oh, these roots are gone. And the next day the roots were <laughs> thick like mm. and they just perked right back up and i was so surprised by that um, see i wonder if having them in pond is better than soil if they're not in a closed environment maybe i wonder if that's mm-hmm. the trick mm-hmm. but the the leaf growing thing is 100 percent true because it's so because they put out like the long ass stem yeah. and then the little tiny little heart leaf like tiny and it just completely inflates over like the next yeah. two weeks it's really cool to watch yeah i really wonder like what the science is behind that They're like is it like the tissues are just spreading i don't know it's cool it it's is very cool. cool it is cool um but yeah my issue with anthurium is i like that when i have hoya on a trellis they're just like going straight up and that's fine but anthurium you really have to like let them have a space you know mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because the leaves get big and wide and they take up room. You had yours in your bathroom, right? Yes, I did. In my bedroom. In, in, oh, you know, above the shower in that little nook would be a perfect yes. anthurium spot. I should get yes. another one. Like a big old leaf babe. That's what I was babe. thinking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You should. Yep. I feel like the prices on them is really going down as well. Like yeah. they're just yeah. not. They used to feel really out of, uh, not out of touch, but you know. Like, it was impossible to get them for a good price, but, like, Equihenida has really great prices. Good mm-hmm. quality plants, too. Like, the ones that we got last year, I still have all of them, and they're all... I'd say 95% of them are really happy still. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good argument. Okay. Yeah, all so... All right, well, we would love to know what your argument is. What genus is your favorite? What do you want to convince us of? Be sure to chat with us over on our post today over on instagram and if you're not already following all of us individually you can i'm at my clean leaves becca is at de la plants and adam is at not dude k-n-o-t and then uh we're at potted together mm-hmm. together and i think that's it we're gonna have together. a poll on our post today so tell us oh, who won hey. no i'm just kidding <laughs> who won? Which genus would you rather have? Yeah, yeah, what genus would you rather have? So in the post, uh, tell us why you like Hoya the best. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have a feeling Hoya is going to win. I have a feeling. But <laughs> anyway, um, I'll give you 10 bucks if you vote for a cactus. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. We also have a Patreon page where you can join and get... Uh, an extra bonus episode once a month and then we also have a second tier where you can get an extra bonus episode every week with every this episode every single week even through the breaks yes. even through our even five through month breaks. break we were every week on <laughs> Patreon maybe maybe that's why I said five months because it didn't. we didn't stop working we worked the whole time really you yeah. know we did but anyway alright guys okay. we we'll will talk see to you next, next week, week. bye, bye. bye. Thank you.